So we're going to be looking at forces and motion, uh, specifically motion in two dimensions. Um, what this means is that we'll be looking at uh, using column vectors uh, or potentially IJ notation for two-dimensional vectors and using that um, in addition to the F equals MA formula. So a, a lot of the questions uh, within this within this topic are effectively using F equals MA where we're treating both F and A as, as vectors, in this case two-dimensional vectors. So let's remind ourselves of this F equals M A equation. Remember, and this is the key thing, that within this equation, I'll use a little bit of color just to highlight this fact, F and A, these are vectors, okay? This is the resultant force, it's a vector, the acceleration is a resultant force, it's a vector, and mass does not have a direction, right? It doesn't make sense to say 20 kilograms upwards or 20 kilograms northeast. 20 kilograms is just a number, it's a mass, it's a scalar quantity. Whereas a force, an acceleration, it makes sense to say I'm pushing you 20 newtons east, or it makes sense to say I'm running away from you at 5 meters per second squared uh, to the left. Right, so those those two things do have a direction, force and acceleration. Uh, mass does not, and it makes sense as an equation because if I multiply a vector a by a mass uh, by a scalar, all that does is give me another vector, which is what the force is here. Okay, so that's the key thing uh, which will be a part of this lesson. Uh, in terms of uh, how we write that, actually, let's just look at um, a couple of possible examples. So let's say, uh, e.g., let's say I have a mass of 2 and I have an acceleration of 1, 3. This implies uh, F is equal to 2 lots of 1, 3 equals 2, 6. And then to just use IJ notation, uh, we can similarly say M equals 2, A equals i plus 3j, this implies f equals 2 lots of i plus 3j, and this is equal to 2i plus 6j. And both of those are saying exactly the same thing, uh, those are just two different ways of using the notation. So you've got your column vector notation and your ij notation, both of which are two-dimensional um, both are, are methods of expressing vectors in two dimensions. Okay, so that's that. That's the that's the main thing we'll be looking at today. Just to give a little bit of intuition uh, behind this, this idea of the force and the mass and the acceleration being interlinked in this way, um, just consider, say, uh, a big object. and a small object, okay, and they're floating out in space. And, you know, it could be rockets or whatever, but two, two different objects floating out in space. The reason I say floating out in space is because I don't want any friction. I'm not gonna say they're on a table because if I interact with something on a table, then the friction of the table is gonna mess up what I'm trying to explain here. So the idea is they're floating out in space and I'm gonna apply a force. Um, so let's say I apply a force of, uh, it doesn't really matter what it is, but let's just say it's the same amount in both cases, okay? We apply a force of 100 newtons, okay? And then the intuition is, well, which of these objects is gonna accelerate faster, right? Both objects are being given the same force, and I'm, you know, it should be clear from the equation, one of them will be accelerating differently to the other because they have different masses, right? And the intuition is the smaller one will accelerate faster. And I mean, this is just a fundamental property of the universe, but it should kind of line up with what you experience in real life. If I have something that doesn't weigh very much, or I should say has a very small mass, when I apply a force to it, it's going to shoot off very quickly. Whereas if I have something very, very big and very, very heavy, then 
something with such a large mass, when I apply a force to it, it'll take a lot longer to get it going, to make it move, to make it increase its velocity. So in this case, um, you know, big object, but has a smaller acceleration. And the smaller object will have the bigger acceleration. At least comparing them with having the same force being applied, okay? And that should make sense because you've got F equals MA as F increases, A decreases, as F decreases, A increases for a given mass. Okay, so let's start looking at some examples. Um, I think I've got three examples I want to go through. Let's look at this first one. They're telling us I is due east, J is due north. They'll always tell you that just for clarification, but it's always the case. I is to the right. J is upwards. You've got a resultant force of 3i plus 8j, you've got a mass of 0 0.5. What is the acceleration of the particle in that form? So this is nice and easy. Um, F is a resultant force, this is 3.8. Mass is 0 0.5. Use F equals ma. This implies uh, 3.8 equals 0.5a. This implies, now I'm going to multiply both sides by 2, so we get 2 times the vector 3a equals a. And that implies that a is equal to 6, 8. Uh, not 6, 8, sorry. 6, 16. And in the notation they want that 6i plus 16j. So that 6 is my P, and that 16 is my Q. Um, then for part B, we're doing our usual sort of um, triangle diagram. So let's just put that aside here. Acceleration equals 6i plus 16j. Find the magnitude and bearing of the acceleration of the particle. Again, this is just magnitude and direction of a vector. In this case, the vector is the acceleration. So um, we've got the acceleration going 6 to the right and 16 upwards. So approximately something like this. So that is my 16 there. That's my 6. Let's write those in. Okay, Ugh. do a nicer six than that. That's 16, that's six. What's the magnitude? Um, magnitude of A equals the square root of six squared plus 16 squared. And you can probably work that out, but comes to 17.1. And then the bearing, um, to be honest, I don't like the use of bearing because really when talking vectors we'd normally be thinking about this angle here this angle theta but that's not the bearing is it the bearing is with respect to north so um, if that's north then the angle I actually want and I'll just give it a name phi okay so phi is what I want phi equals what I don't know so theta equals um, tan inverse of the opposite 16 over 6. And that's equal to 69.4, if you work it out on your calculator. So if that's 69.4, then my phi, which is my bearing, is 90 minus 69.4, which is equal to 20.6. And as a bearing, I'm going to write that it was three digits, 0 to 0. 0.6. And this one here, this 17.1, that's the magnitude. Okay, first example done. So now here we've got, uh, let's see, one, two, three forces. All values are given. 
on a mass, which value is given, what's the acceleration? Easy stuff. So we say f is equal to what? You're going to have to find the resultant. What is the resultant force? 2 minus 5 is minus 3 plus 6, 3. 4 plus 4 minus 5, 3. Okay, so we know it's going at 45 degrees because it's going the same amount right as it is up. Uh, not that it's asking us that. So that's the force. We know f equals ma. Um, we can, of course, always rewrite this as a equals 1 over m times f, which makes sense. In this case, that's equal to a third times the 3, 3 vector, which is a 1, 1 vector. It says find the acceleration. Right, so this is the acceleration in full detail. This gives me the magnitude and the direction implicitly, as in I can't just look at this vector and just tell you straight away the magnitude and um, direction. Well, I mean, you can with practice, but you know, given any two numbers, it's not straight away possible. You have to work it out. So this column vector gives us all the information we need about acceleration. In terms of when it says find the acceleration, I suppose it's a bit ambiguous. That could either mean that could either mean the vector or the value of the magnitude. If it hasn't said the word magnitude, I'm going to assume actually it is just this. Um, let me have a quick look at the book. Right, actually, so yeah, having looked at it, uh, this is what they describe as the the acceleration i plus j, which is in fact the one one vector. Um, that's completely valid. That makes sense. I plus j, and if we want the units, meters per second squared. I'm just going to add as a bonus to this then, if we wanted the magnitude and direction, we should be able to find that quite easily. The direction, I basically said it out loud before, it'll be 45 degrees, right? Because if you've got a vector, and that's 1, and that's 1, then you've effectively got... Um, uh, a triangle with two sides the same, so this must be 45 degrees. And additionally, 1 plus 1, where they're both squared, gives me 2, so it's just root 2. Okay. So if the, if the question asks you what's the magnitude of the acceleration, it's actually root 2. If it just says the acceleration, it means full detail, give me the vector, 1, 1, or in this case, i plus j. Cool. So now our third example, uh, we've got a boat, model it as a particle, meaning we just pretend it's a dot, mass of 60 kilograms, three forces, values are known for the first, the values aren't known for the second, although we know P and Q are, are presumably independent of each other, so we don't know, and the third one we know the values. Then you're given the acceleration, you're given all the values. So this is just going to be not even really simultaneous equations. It's just going to be solving a pair of independent equations, I assume. Find the resultant. That's 80, 50, plus 10p, 10q, uh, 20q, 10p, 20q, uh, plus, minus 7, 5, 100. And we're going to say that's equal to mass, which is 60, times acceleration, which is 0 0.8 minus 1.5. This implies, and then we can write this as uh, just a set of massive vectors. So we can say 80 minus 75, so that's this 80 minus 75 plus 10p, that gives me 5 plus 10p close the vector, and on the bottom line, 50 plus 100 plus 20q. So let's call that 150 plus 20q. Okay, and what I've written there is just one big vector, which is totally fine to do. And on the right hand side, I'm going to do 60 times 0 0.8, so that's 48, uh, and 60 times minus 1.5, which is 9, minus 90. Okay, 
and then these two vectors being equal, this implies, if you want to be completely formal in your notation, these two separate equations. Okay, And although it looks like I've just written exactly the same thing twice, I mean, I kind of have, but one of these is saying these two vectors are equal, and the other is saying I've got these two independent equations. Um, so from those equations then, you'll get your answer for finding the values of P and the values of Q. Um, shouldn't be too much work. Um, in fact, I'll just write the answers here. This implies P equals and Q equals 4.3 and minus 12. And that should be fairly simple to get from your equations here. Great. So before we launch into doing a few questions, um, let me just touch on one, one last thing, which uh, you should have seen before, but um, it's, it's good to have a reminder. It's about describing parallel vectors, or for our purposes, I suppose, parallel forces or parallel acceleration, or any quantity which can be represented as a vector. So the idea is, um, if you're given a statement um, within a question, such as this, let's say, for example, um, e.g., um, I have a force, uh, let's say, R, which is parallel to, uh, let's make something up, 3, 2. Okay? If you're given that, how are you going to write that as a mathematical statement? So just to remind you, you're going to do it this way. You're going to say r is equal to lambda times 3, 2. Okay? And all that's saying is it's got 3, 2 as its direction. And we don't know the magnitude, so it's some multiple of this. So lambda is some, some constant. It'll have a value, but we don't know what it is. But being able to write this, r equals lambda 3, 2, is more information than not being able to write it. Yeah, so this, this tells us about the direction of r in some sense. Um, and you may also see something like, instead of force, it might say something else. Um, it could say, I have an acceleration, you know, which is, and then it might say something like, um, I don't think any of the questions do this, but it could say I have an acceleration which is um, in the northeast direction, for example. Northeast direction. Okay. So if you had a question like that, then again you'd have to say, right, so which way is northeast? That's this way. How do I describe that as a vector? I mean, there's infinite vectors which describe it. You just need to pick one which has the correct direction. So, for example, uh, the vector 1, 1, that's a perfectly valid um, vector which has a northeasterly direction. So does 2, 2. So does 3, 3. Right? But, uh, say, 1 minus 1 does not. So... It's the, the, the point is the relationship between the two components. 1, 1 is northeast. Uh, in the same way that, for example, 1 minus 1 would be southeast, yeah, if you think about it. So then, in this case, if you were given this information, we'd say the acceleration is equal to lambda times 1, 1. Because again, you know that it's this direction, but you don't know the magnitude. So you're going to have to say lambda. So um, you could even say a equals lambda 1, 1. Okay? So that's just a note on how you formalize information that's about the direction of a vector or about the direction of acceleration. Make use of the, of the lambda. And if you have multiple unknowns, then you might have to say lambda 1, lambda 2. Okay, so take a look at your first question. You've given a resultant force. You're given an acceleration, work out the mass. Pause the video now.
Okay, uh, that shouldn't have been too bad. And then your mass that you should have got is 0 0.86 kilograms. Okay, so now let's look at this question. You will have to use what we've just gone through for the first three parts. Um, for part D, um, perhaps a bit of SUVAT. Okay, give this question a go. Pause the video now. And there are your answers. Okay, next question. So this is where uh, you have to make use of that which I was speaking about. If you know a force or an acceleration or some vector is parallel to something, you have to just express it as being equal to lambda times that. Okay, so for this question, more than ever, write mathematically all the information you're given, and then it's just a case of rearranging it to get what it is that you need to show. Give that one a go. Pause the video now. And these steps, I just flashed them up, uh, are there. So in this case, uh, they've used the letter K rather than the letter lambda. It doesn't matter. Uh, the logic is still the same, whether you use uh, lambda or K. Right, and then uh, getting trickier now, let's take a look at this one. When you're ready to try it, pause the video now. And let's take a look at the answers. Hopefully you've had some success with that one. There we go. So 10A was similar to the previous question and then for part B you had to do uh, a little bit of your own work there to get 0 0.2 kilograms. Okay, and then uh, if you've got time and you've been doing well, have a go at this challenge question. I'm not gonna give you any tips for this one. Just give it a go. Pause the video now. Okay, and if you've given that a go, you've definitely given it a go. Here's the answer. K equals eight 